Hi, this is Chelsea and Tony, and you're watching or listening to our photography podcast, Picture This. It's, av it's available here on YouTube or it's available anywhere that you can download your podcasts. You can go to sdp.io slash podcast to figure out how to get it in different ways. And this week we're talking about five ways to make your family love photography. I know that's a problem for a lot of people because we get questions about how to get my wife, how to get my girlfriend, how to get my kids to take pictures with me or like photography. Sometimes your family hates photography. They're sick of you <laughs> take, taking all your time yeah. to take pictures. Like they just want to move when you're on a, yeah, a trip. That definitely happens. So we're working our way down from number five to number one, which I think is the most important thing to consider when getting your family to like photography. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Squarespace, for making this podcast possible. Whether you want a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. They have beautiful award-winning templates, 24-7 customer support. It's so easy to make. You don't have to be a nerd to do it. You just have to know how to drag and drop. Get your free trial at squarespace.com slash Tony. And if you decide that you like it, you can get 10% off your first purchase with the coupon code PORTFOLIO. Thanks, Squarespace. Yeah. Number five is be quick. Yes, I think we've all had that experience where we're walking, we're on vacation, or we're on a hike, and we're taking a little too long to get a picture, and our family says, come on, hurry up, stop taking pictures, I want to go. Yeah, my wife is really into photography, and sometimes <laughs> she's real slow about it. <laughs> it can get real annoying. So oh. what I do is... I, I, there's none of this camera backpack with five lenses in it and a tripod and sets of filters and everything. Uh, I have a camera strap with a camera attached to it, one lens, a lens hood, and that's it. No lens cap, no filters that I'm fussing with, and then I've developed a bunch of techniques that help me get the best picture I can without having to switch lenses. So first, a super zoom lens can help a lot. I know they, they're not the sharpest or the fastest in the world, but get one of those like 18 to 105 or 24 to 300, and that means you won't have to change lenses and you'll just be moving much faster. If you don't want to have to carry a super wide angle lens around, learn to use panoramas. We cover panoramas in chapter three of Stunning Digital Photography, but that means that your 24 millimeter lens can instantly become a 16 millimeter lens or whatever you need it to be, and I promise I could take an eight or 10 picture panorama faster than anybody could change out a lens. And then you're sitting and you're doing some work in post-processing, but at least you don't have family members annoyed with you, right? Yeah, exactly true. <laughs> uh, image stabilization, a must have too. Yeah. You can't be carrying around a tripod or anything like that. Oh, That's no. just taking you're, way too long. You're just gonna stop starting uprising in your family <laughs> if you're taking all that time, ease into it. Tip number four of the top five ways to make your family love photography. <laughs> Get social. So many times I see people like a certain type of photography, so maybe they're taking landscape pictures uh, and they expect their family to be patient, but um, your family wants to be in the pictures and they want to be a part of it. So when you're taking your family pictures or you're out and about with your family, get pictures of them and then share them on social media, tag them, make them feel a part of it, and then they can kind of see what you're doing and feel like, you know, it's a worthy cause. They're yeah, seeing them be used. This happens with me and Madeline all the time because I'm always taking pictures and she has zero interest in it, but the moment I put up a picture and tag her on Instagram, she's very excited about it. And over time, like her and her friends will come to me and be like, oh, can you take a picture of us doing this thing? And they want to be able to share it because everybody likes looking good. And then they're involved in the process and they have a little more patience to it. Yeah, so if you're into macro or something, it can be tempting to just post bug picture, flower picture, but that's going to be more difficult to convince your family to sit around and wait for when you're out and about. If nothing else, you'll have something in common because yeah. if even if they're not into photography, I promise they're taking pictures and putting it on social media. But so many serious photographers that I know, their pictures never get outside of Lightroom on their computer. It's nice to hang them around the house too. Yeah. I mean, we're talking a smaller level of social, but if you have your pictures on the wall and you're all walking by them every day, it feels more communal. It already feels like they're a part of it. Yeah, it brings them back to that moment, but also lets them appreciate the photography a little bit more. Number three. Encourage and teach the art. 
So if you're lucky enough to get to that stage with your family where one of them wants to pick up a camera and take their own picture, don't say, no, don't do it that way. What's your f-stop? What's your ISO? What's this? Don't, ugh, chill. We know you're excited, but you don't want to scare them off. Just be encouraging. Say, oh, you got a really great picture. Point out their strong points. Point out what they did right. A lot of people get hooked on photography because they got a picture they feel like was a good picture and that encourages them to take more pictures. That's actually exactly what happened to you. Right, because I grew up in the middle of nowhere, Texas, where everything was flat and dry. And when I moved up into the Massachusetts area, I started exploring the countryside. And, and one day I took a trip out to Baxter State Park in Maine with my disposable camera, because that was the only camera I'd ever owned, cheap film disposable camera. And I just happened to wake up early and went out and took a walk and stumbled across this little pond. And a moose was wading out into the pond with the rising sun and the mountains behind it. And I just with my dumb film camera, but the picture turned out awesome. And then I showed it to people and they're like, oh my God, that picture's fantastic. And, and that just began a lifelong love of photography. Yeah. But it's not just me. I know like every photographer that I've seen go from beginner to great had that one early on picture that was probably dumb luck, but everybody praised them for it and they internalized it and they ran with it. So do give that gift to anybody you know who's taking snapshots on Instagram. Find something great and, and let them appreciate it. Yeah, let them enjoy the moment. That happened to me too. What's your story? I was 15 and I was in Bath, England and there's this bridge that goes over the river uh, and it's like you can't take a bad shot of it. It's the most beautiful spot. And my aunt blew up a big print of it and gave it to me and said, you took this picture when we were there and it's so beautiful and I wanted you to have it. And I thought, yeah, I am pretty great, aren't I? And then I took a, a photography class in high school and I learned how to roll, roll film. And so just that little bit of encouragement got me going. I think uh, making a print for somebody, like taking their picture and making a print and giving it back to them would be a great way to encourage somebody. Yeah, that was really nice of her. Thanks, Aunt Liz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a moment and thank our sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace makes websites that make your pictures look fantastic. Yeah, speaking of taking your pictures and putting them somewhere so you can see them all of the time, making your own Squarespace portfolio is a great way to go through all of those pictures you may have forgotten about, putting them in a place that's beautiful because their templates look professional and designed by you know, some top designer, mm -hmm. and then you can see what your photos look like as a collection. You can also load up the portfolio app on your phone and quickly show people your best pictures without having to dig through the 10,000 pictures that you have in your camera reel. <laughs> That'll even be offline. So if you are in some random location in Baxter State Park in Maine and you don't have Wi-Fi, you can still pull it up and show it to the moose or whoever's walking down the trail. That's really nice because I think it's embarrassing when someone says, look at this great picture I got, and they're going through their photo. Oh, that's my dog. He had a sore. <laughs> Hold on. It's in here somewhere. Yeah. When you're showing them your portfolio, you're scrolling past, past the best pictures. Not an embarrassing selfie. And you can get your free portfolio, no credit card needed, none of that sneaky kind of stuff. You can just go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Make a free portfolio, see how you like it. I think you're going to like it a lot. And then if you decide to get it, it's affordable and you can get 10% off with the coupon code portfolio. Thanks Squarespace. We're looking at the top five ways to get your family to love photography just like you do. And number two is to get them a cool camera. Cool. And, and I don't mean to say that the smartphone can't be a great camera for them because that's the camera, that's the default camera. That's the camera that everybody uses now and they can go far with it. And maybe this, the smartphone is going to be the only camera they ever want to use. But if they start expressing interest in getting us a little bit better images, maybe controlling it, zooming in a little further, blurring the background, that kind of thing, don't just grab them your big DSLR or the camera that you would love, but think about who they are and especially younger generation who grew up on smartphones, get them a camera that's a little more smartphone-like and a little less 1980s DS or SLR-like. So I'm going to make a couple of specific suggestions, and, and one is the Olympus uh, Pen PL8. And what I like about this camera for people who are new to photography and grew up on smartphones is that it's very small and light. The back screen is almost all filled with a touchscreen, and it flips down for selfies. Nice. 
and it crucial. Com- yep, and you know what? It completely lacks a viewfinder, which would appall everybody who grew up on SLRs. But a hundred percent of people I see using cameras who grew up on smartphones, they they hold the camera out in front of them, and they never use the viewfinder anyway. So it's absolutely wasted. We have a thirteen-year-old daughter, and she never uses the viewfinder. Nope. So, I mean, sometimes I shouldn't say never, but she mostly just likes the live view. That makes sense. That's intuitive to her after using her phone for all these years. Yeah, and styling is subjective, but I like the Olympus. It looks a little retro. It has made of really nice materials, and with a lens, it's less than five hundred bucks. So it's and it's a, just a solid step up from a smartphone. It allows them to express themselves. Another camera I really like is the Fujifilm XA3. It has the same traits: selfie screen, big screen, no viewfinder, small, lightweight, and it'll actually look good on them. Yeah. So maybe they won't mind carrying it around if it becomes a fashion accessory. I take note when we're traveling and I see a large group of teenagers taking pictures. They usually have small little cameras like that that are a bit more. They're easy to carry around, first of all, but they're a bit more fashionable. They're not mm-hmm. clunky. And number Our one, number one tip to get your family to like photography is to do what they like. Right? Isn't that what it's all about? Compromise. You have to give a little bit. You can't expect them to completely come into your world and like everything that you like. And so some of my suggestions on how to do that is to take pictures of them that they would like. If you have a three-year-old son that loves superheroes, dress him up and do the photo shoot of his dreams and show him the pictures. That's going to encourage him to model for you more often and to enjoy the process. Likewise, if you have a teenage daughter, like I do, when we go on vacation, I take some shots for me that she thinks are boring, but I also take the time to say, hey, Madeline, you know what would look awesome? If you went up at the top of that trail and you put your arms out like this and the sun's coming down through your hair, we'll put it on your Instagram. And we make a picture together and it's fun for her. And I've actually found that over the years, she started to say more things like, Mad, uh, Mom, will you take a picture of me next to this? Or Mom, what if I get in this doorway and put my arms out? She's starting to think of how to make pictures on her own. So she went from just following us around, oh, come on, Mom and Dad, just hurry up, to, guys, let's take this picture together and let's pose and let's get in this light. You might even think about how to bring photography into what you and your family are doing anyway. So... Uh, Madeline plays soccer. Right. And sometimes it can be two, three, four, five games a week. Like, I'm there a lot. So I'm taking (laughs) pictures of soccer. And she loves to see those pictures. And she gets involved. And even her friends like those pictures because it kind of goes viral. Yeah. Because I'll take pictures of her. So then I'm actually having a good time. And in the process of taking pictures, I'm paying more attention to the game. Sometimes I know very specifically if somebody shoves somebody or if a call was bad because I'm looking through this long lens and I'm engaged <laughs> and I, I'm just, it, I enjoy it more and the, she's getting something out of it too. Um, but we know uh, Eric and Stephanie Lowenbach and Stephanie just loves being outdoors and but she's not really into photography that much. She uses her smartphone a lot. She takes great pictures actually. Eric Lowenbach, an amazing landscape photographer who always hauls around a lot of gear But these two hobbies happen to work out perfectly. Yeah. Because Eric wants to get up early and take pictures. Stephanie wants to watch the sunrise. Yeah, she wants to explore. Yeah. So maybe your spouse likes to watch the sunrise. You could get into (laughs) making time lapses. Just go out with your camera. Or maybe they're a bird watcher. Get into wildlife photography. Maybe that's not your favorite type of photography. Yeah. But it can be, and you'll be having a good time. Or maybe they like cooking. You could say, hey, will you style a shoot for me? Cook that awesome chicken pot pie that you make and let's make it look beautiful with a sprig of rosemary and take a picture together. That's a great idea. I know. (laughs) (laughs) If you have more ideas on how to make your family like photography, if things have worked for you with your family, put some comments down below. Um, If you're on YouTube, that is. And yeah. I guess that's it for our ideas. We're out. (laughs) Justin, we're out. (laughs) Thank you to our sponsors, Squarespace. If you want to set up a website of any type, whether it's a portfolio for your business or whatever, go to squarespace.com slash Tony. Get your 14-day free trial, no credit card required. And if you decide you like it, 
using coupon code portfolio. They even have stores and stuff. I know, it's really cool. All right, thanks guys, bye. Thank you.